So there's this tool called GitHub Copilot, which is based on the ChatGPT's AI by Microsoft. And as you're coding in your text editor, basically you're able to press tab on your keyboard and autocode suggestions may appear that helps you finish your train of thought in code. It's a pretty magical experience and has helped me code at least 10 times faster. But as I use GitHub Copilot more and more, I get so used to the habit of having an AI complete my thoughts of sentences. Whenever I'm writing a Google document or texting my friends on WhatsApp, I only type out half of my sentence and instinctively press tab thinking that AI would finish my thought. This is honestly not a good habit to have and it's making me realize that it's making my brain mush from relying too much on AI now. You know, maybe in the future, AIs can directly read from our minds and we can just communicate with each other using pure thoughts. But that's still a few years away. Well, back on topic. After being so frustrated with the lack of AI support in chat apps, I thought, why not just do it myself and create the integration? So yeah, I guess we'll be making a Chrome extension today to help us become even lazier. Right. So there are four main steps in helping us with AI supremacy, I mean, increasing social productivity. Number one, we have to set up a Chrome extension to be able to read and modify the website structure. Number two, scrape the website HTML text to get out the history of the chat so far. The third step is to feed the history of the chat into our AI. And the last step is take the output of the AI and display back on the page for 10 out of 10 user experience. Okay, first step, setting up a Chrome extension. ChatGPT, how do I create a Chrome extension? Okay. Copy. Paste. Unpack code into Chrome. And now we have a working Chrome extension that shows us a blank empty page. Let's try to make the extension actually do something interesting. To test it, we'll replace all vowels on the page to meow. Damn, that's pretty chaotic. Well, the good news is that the extension is working fine and so we can now move on to stage 2. In order for us to obtain the message within the page, we must first understand how the website is structured and how we can pull out data. A website is written in a format called HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It describes the structure of the page and is a tree-like representation of a website. We can describe blocks of contents in a page by using different HTML tags, like divs tag, which stands for divisions, and also other semantic tags such as an anchor tag which represents links to other pages. Now armed with the power of HTML, let's take a deep dive into the structure of WhatsApp and let's see how all the messages are hidden within the HTML codes. Most browsers come with a handy developer tool which allows us to inspect elements of the current page. We can update and change the HTML codes of the website and it will reflect directly in the current site. Don't worry though, these changes are only made on our site and does not actually change the content when other people view the site. It is a useful tool for us developers who are trying to investigate into the structure of the site. There are a few things we need to obtain from WhatsApp. For each message, we need two things. Firstly, we need a user who sent the message, and secondly, the message content itself. Web scraping WhatsApp is a tricky task in this case because of how convoluted they nested their messages within their HTML structure. It's as though they intentionally do not want us developers poking around their sites. After a few hours of finding ways to obtain the messages, I ended up successfully scraping out the history of the chat. WhatsApp does not load the entirety of chat history whenever you visit each chat, and in this case, we got the latest 13 messages from the chat. That's good. With this history, we can now proceed to step 3 feeding it into the AI. At first I wanted to use OpenAI's ChatGPT model for the auto-completion, but then my broke ass realized that I actually used up all my free credits for the ChatGPT API and I do not want to give my credit card information to OpenAI, which is a company that is allegedly stealing people's personal information. Which is why I decided to give my credit card details to Google, who recently launched their own AI model garden called Vertex AI. It contains a whole suite of AI tools that is able to solve an array of problems. In this case, we need their text completion model, similar to ChatGPT's model. The text completion model comes with the Python SDK, which stands for Software Development Kit. But since I'm using JavaScript for the Chrome extension, I needed a JavaScript way of interacting with their model. But after spending hours and hours looking through their documentation, I couldn't find any official ways of using JavaScript to interact with their model. And thus, using my big brain, I thought to myself, why not just use AI to help me write JavaScript code to interact with the model? So I pasted in the code into ChatGPT, and magically, it gave me the JavaScript solution. Awesome! With this in our toolkit, we can start feeding our chat history into Google's model. I'm sure they do not collect data used on their model. Anyways, now all we need to do is to provide some prompt engineering such that the AI will be able to provide the correct autocomplete options in the correct format for me to show to the users. You're an AI embedded in an AI-powered chat app. I will pass you a context of the 20 latest messages of the chat labeled by who said it and you will give me an options of how to appropriately respond in the next message. Basically, I gaslighted the AI and gave it some output examples of how I would like the options to be formatted. And with that, let's try running the autocomplete code. 
Yay! It's able to return us with three options of responses based on the given chat input. We are so close to AI supremacy. Now, all we need to do is to display the options from AI into a nice option box in WhatsApp for the users to select. Other than being able to just read from websites, we can also manually add in elements into the site to modify its behavior. In this case, I just added a few boxes above the input box for the user to choose. And whenever they click on one of those options, the text will be copied into their clipboard and they are able to send the messages back into the chat. And with that, we have completed our Chrome extension and I will be using this extensively to minimize my social interaction even online. Well, we have come to the end of the video. Thank you so much for sticking to the end and watching the video. So I've actually posted all the code in my GitHub and I've linked it down below in the description. If you want to try it, all the code and all the description and the instruction on how to set up the extension will be down below. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, subscribe, comment, like, all that stuff. Thank you so much. And uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a great day ahead and happy coding.